Craig Glory, one time in a teaching on prophecy and basically on biblical doctrines, said something interesting. He said, if it's new, it's not true. Well, I like that. I kind of agree with it, but I also like to rephrase things in my own way, in my own thoughts. I like to say, if you think it's new, it's not true, because everything really has happened before. And one of the things I've discovered in my lifetime is that most of what people are doing today, I've already seen. I lived it. You know, the occupiers, you know, those people that protested and wanted to occupy Wall Street, they wanted to occupy LA, and they wanted to occupy this, that, and the other thing. I seem to remember some hippies doing the same thing. You know, and some young people going up to the National Democratic Convention and trying to take that over. I remember some people at Kent State, you know, sitting in, you know, and trying to take that over. I remember quite a few different places, you know, when we were protesting the war, and then protesting the government, and then protesting this, and protesting that. Matter of fact, it's kind of humorous, if you think about it, when you look back on time, you remember those days, you know, we had terrorists, oh, we didn't call them terrorists, they were, you know, people that bombed Washington, D.C., you know, the embassies there, oh, they were homegrown terrorists, but it wasn't post 9-11, so we don't react the same way. We didn't have the internet, so we didn't jump up and down and get all excited, you know, about 9-11. I mean, there are no monuments to the 60s when, you know, they were taking over banks and, you know, all kinds of things were going on in the country and it looked like complete civil war. Oh, well, we don't remember that. You know, it wasn't that bad, was it? Unless you were there, you really don't know. I remember living in L.A., you know, and quite frankly, the race riots and the peace riots and all kinds of warfare going on. Now, National Guard were called in troops were called in, that seems pretty serious to me. But, you know, we don't think of it that way. Today, it's the Occupy movement that's got us occupied. Never mind that the hippies already did it the first time around. You know, the baby boomers. And I kind of remember, you know, like, well, you know, all this kind of like secession from the Union. I think we tried that back in the 60s and 70s. I think, you know, recently because of the elections, people got a little whiny little complaining that they didn't get what they wanted, so now they want to get out of the Union, you know, supposedly secede from the United States of America. You know, I don't know about you, but history kind of told me that the Civil War took care of that the first time around. Now, the next time around, it kind of got taken care of during the Nam War, because, quite frankly, people were saying, we're fighting an unjust war. Oh, wait a minute. In those days, we didn't honor our veterans. We treated them like they were the worst possible scum of the earth. And they were sus they were upholding the law of the government. So we didn't want them, did we? Or be like them. Or did we? Because look where we are today. It's interesting that everything that has gone on before is being replayed out in society again. And I kind of like being old enough to realize that if you think it's new, it's not true, because it's already happened before. There's nothing new under the sun, the Bible says. We've all seen it happen at some point in time. And we're told that the Old Testament, the Bible itself, parts of it were written for our example, that we could learn from the lives of the people that were living life with God intervening in their life, directly speaking to them, and we could learn from that. We could appropriate that same examples in our lives because God is intervening in our lives today. And that's kind of what people forget. They forget that God's in control, not man. They get caught up in being, you know, in the world, but not of the world. They become in the world and of the world and with the world because they forget that this isn't their home. They're really supposed to be in a kingdom that's here on earth that you can't see, the kingdom of God. And that there will be Jesus coming back soon to establish his kingdom on the world. It won't look like what it does today if democracy is not God's way. So when people get caught up in democracy or politics or you know saluting the flag or patriotism, I'm always fascinated by looking at history and seeing what happens next. Because whenever I look back at history, I always see what the country's going to do next. And they've done it over and over and over again. 
even with elections. I do the same looking at the Bible. God has already told us what's going to happen at the end of the world. He's already shown us that as it was in the days of Noah and Lot, so it would be in our day. And likewise, as they were doing in those days, we would be doing in our day. And so I kind of know what's happening in the future. It's not real hard. It didn't take a genius to figure it out. And people, quite frankly, are deceiving themselves by getting caught up in all these extracurricular activities that have nothing to do with what God has said. So I wonder today, are you with God or against God? Are you in God's way or are you doing it God's way? Think about that. Are you in God's way or are you doing it God's way? Because you see, God is the one who put people in office. God is the one who is in control of the world. God is the one who has set princes in their place, kings in their thrones, presidents in their office, Congress in its seats. God is the one who has raised up nations and set them against each other. God is the one who has always been and ever will be in control of all things, even to the very hairs on your head. He never even told you, said it best. He says, look, God is so personally involved that he's even down to the nth degree of detail, so consumed with what you're personally involved in, he wants to know every day what you're doing. Now, A.W. Tozer lived in my generation. He lived what we see today. So it's not as though we're talking about faith in God. We're talking about God in faith, meaning that God had better be real in your life because he is the one who is doing all these things. Things are happening according to his will. Now, the choices you make are determining whether you're standing in his will or you're standing in his way. Are you really doing what God said to do today? You need to examine yourself always, every day, and find out if you're doing his will or yours. Because often I see, most of the time, when I hear Christians talking about things against, quote unquote, the church, things against the government, things against society, things against the morals, things against issues, I find that they're always doing something about the outward things and never anything about the inward things. You know, they don't want to save the president, they want to remove the president. They don't want to save the country, they want to replace the country. They don't want to be a part of the solution, they want to secede from the problem. In other words, are you doing what God says to do? Are you accomplishing His will to be done on this world as we share the gospel and the salvation that God has brought to this nation? Or are we rather choosing something else other than God's solution for the world, which is Jesus Christ? It is a simple matter to ask yourself whether you today have talked to God or not. You could pretend like you did. You could act like you did. You could fake it in order to faith it later and then say, Oh well, yeah, you know, of course I prayed. Well, did you? And did you get an answer? In other words, did you wait on the Lord today? to do any decision-making process that you've chosen to do today? Or did you just run off saying, well, of course God wants me to do it? Of course. Whenever someone says, of course, in some form or shape that they always do on the web, I always say, what course? Are you on course or are you discourse? Because you're causing other people to follow you in a wrong way if you're doing it without doing it God's way. If you have not sought the Lord to follow in His footsteps and to hear His voice today, you are totally deceived in your own way of thinking and not thinking according to the will of God that He said, trust in me with all your heart and don't lean in your own understanding. Find out what I have to say today. Figure out what I'm doing and then ask me to show you the way. And I will. God said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God who abradeth not, but give it to all men liberally. You don't have to figure it out with your brain, intellect, and intelligence, or somehow pour over the scriptures and find some detail that you could say, oh, well, I got this one scripture, so I'm going to run with it. Oh, I got this one example, so I'm going to run with it. It is, and always has been, whether you recognize it or not, the volume of the book. If you can't fit what you're doing into the volume, 
and God told you to do it, you're following the wrong God. You're following your own imagination. And God warned in the latter days that we would create gods after our own imagination. We would take the image of the incorruptible God and change him into the image of corruptible man. We would make our gods the gods of men. We would make God Almighty into someone we can influence, someone we can dictate to, someone we can get from, and someone we can manipulate in our own way to do what we say and not what His will be done. And God allows that at this time. He's going to allow that to go on until one day you wake up in the tribulation period and the heavens are rolled back and you discover that God is real. I know God's real because He works in my life. I know God's real because He talks to me in my life. I know God is real because He works with me in doing what He wants me to accomplish in my life. And you know, I know He's real because I choose to obey the things He says to do in my life. Jesus loved the church and gave Himself for it, that He might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the Word. Walk in love as Jesus also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the watching of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. Thy word has quickened me. It has made me alive. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. And the commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Jesus said, By this shall all men know you are my disciples indeed, in that you have love for one another. People sometimes have a funny way of showing love. God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Jesus died. His funny way of showing it was that he was willing to lay down his life to do his Father's will. He didn't do what people asked him to do. He did what God told him to do. And that's the difference between you and I. We could sit here and play games with theology and come up with all kinds of reasons why we get away and do according to what we want to do, according to what we think we can do, and according to the grace that's been given us. But the bottom line is, if you love someone, you want to do those things that are pleasing in his sight. You want to seek him out and to be with him or her, in the case may be. And so you choose to make that person happy. And if you were choosing to make God happy, then I think you want to find out what are the things that makes Him happy, not our, what are the things that make you happy. Because you'll find as you do His will, happiness will find you. But when you choose to go your own way, not only will you become discouraged today as well as in the rest of your life, but God will begin to work against you to bring you back towards Him so that you could choose today to walk with him in a simple way that all you had to do was ask him today, Lord, what do you want me to do today?